Hi, I'm Scott. Today I'm going to show you how I designed and built this Navy Shadow Box on Dad It Yourself. Today's video is brought to you by Stitch to Stitch. For all your embroidery, screen printing, and vinyl application needs, patches, hats, and apparel, no minimum order, specializing in one off old patch reproductions. So, today's project, I'm going to complete a shadow box for a Navy Chief Petty Officer who's retiring after over 20 years of service to the country. I'm not going to show you how I built the box. I have a couple of videos on how that's done, and there'll be a link down in the description if you want to check those out. From a woodworker's perspective, a shadow box is just a really deep picture frame, but to the recipient, it's a symbol of their Navy career and the service to our country. The purpose of this video is going to show you what a shadow box is, how it's designed, what's placed in it, and why it's placed in there. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the design. Most shadow boxes are meant to be hung on a wall like a picture. Normally they're square or rectangle, but they're not limited to that. They can be round, a hexagon, a pentagon, or even a triangle. They can be incorporated into another item like a shelf, a ship's wheel, or even a piece of a ship, vehicle, or airplane. The design options are unlimited. In the case of this box, we're building a simple rectangle. This box is 20 inches tall by 30 inches wide, and it's about two and a half inches deep. The box is built so it's big enough to accommodate all the items that are being placed inside and deep enough for the thickness of the flag that goes in the corner. This box is standard miter corner construction with a rabbit on the top and bottom for the front and back panels. Speaking of the flag, you can place a flag in any position desired, multiple positions such as adding a state or organizational flag to an opposite corner, but in this box we're going with the flag in the upper left hand corner. The flag is selected is a standard 3x5, but you can use a 2.5x4, a 4x6, or even the larger 5.5x9-inch casket flag. When dealing with a flag in the corner of a rectangular box, you're dealing with a 90 degree and two 45 degrees, when in actuality, a flag when folded is 80 degrees, 50 degrees, and 50 degrees. But because this is cloth, you can manipulate it in and get it to fit in the corner nicely. The key here is that it fills the area and it looks symmetrical when displayed. So a folded flag can actually be a little bit bulky. If you're dealing with a thin shadow box or you want to set the fold, just take this to your local dry cleaner. They usually steam press it free of charge. So the next component of the shadow box is the back panel. The panel is covered with a blue velveteen material that's attached with spray adhesive. I use 3M77. The panel is sprayed and when tacking the material is laid down, the edges are trimmed with the scissors, and then I've pre-drilled the back of this panel so it can be installed with brass screws. Now that the back panel is installed, it gives me a better idea of the area I have to fill. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have the recipient come over and help me lay out the box and when he brought all his memorabilia over and we actually figured out that the box he had originally wanted which was about 24 inches wide by about 18 inches tall was going to be too small for everything he had so we built the bigger box and we laid everything out and I took a picture of it and now we're going to put everything in and see kind of where it goes and then we'll get everything glued in. So now that I've got everything in its rough layout, I'm going to use my Ryobi 18 volt glue gun. This thing's a monster. If you don't have one of these, you should check it out. I'll have a link to it in the description. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue everything down, probably working from inside or excuse me, outside in and then kind of spacing everything and getting it centered and getting a feel for it as I move along and it'll just kind of find its spot. Well, let's get started.
So before I put the face panel on this, I'm going to give it a quick vacuum to get all the little pieces of sawdust and the hot glue hairs and stuff out of that. Invariably, what's going to end up happening is once I put the front panel on, I'll have to pull the back panel off because there's always one piece of dust or something comes out or something just needs to be fixed. So, but I try to do it once and maybe I'll get lucky this time. So I use these acrylic panels from the home center. Uh, you can use plastic, plexiglass, Lexan, acrylic, regular plate glass, or tempered glass. It's kind of your choice. Uh, I found that this works the best. It's pretty resilient to uh, moving these things. Uh, military people tend to move, so uh, cracking it and replacing it would be kind of a chore. Um, the one time I did try glass, I actually broke it just putting it in. So uh, I have found a lot of luck with this one. I buy these in the size, this one's 30 by 20, and then I size the box to it so I don't have to cut the panel. They come in the 18 by 24, 8 by 10, 10 by 12, or any size you really want, and then I build the box to them, or you can cut these simply with a combo blade on your table saw. So let's put this in. So now that I have the plexi on, I have these face frames that I've already pre-cut, finished, and they're ready to go on. I'm going to use Type-On Quick and Thick, only needs 15 minutes to uh, put under clamps. I use tape, and then maybe over here where the flag's a little thick and it's pushing back, I may put a couple of clamps, and in 15 minutes this face frame will be done, and this box will be ready for presentation. Well, there it is, all complete, a fitting symbol of service to our country. I hope he enjoys it. If you have any questions or suggestions, don't forget to put those down in the comments. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in, and the subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.